So I'm aware that I have now been making videos on YouTube for the past three years and I still haven't done a video talking about my favourite books of all time and I'm really disappointed in myself so I'm gonna stop being disappointed in myself and instead make the jolly video. So without further ado these are my favourite top 10 books of all time. The first one is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf and this is a book that I read at university and I read it during a university holiday and I just remember being totally immersed in it and just wanting to, to chew over the language and I think that is something that you'll probably see a theme across all of these is all of them have really great writing and not much happens in this book it's really a character study, you get inside the heads of different characters, it's a lot of stream of consciousness, uh, but it's it's just so beautifully written and so beautifully described and imagined that you really feel as though you're in this, this setting. It's a very poignant novel as well, um, a lot to do with the world war um, that happens pretty much in, in the middle of this novel. Um, so if you haven't read any Virginia Woolf before, I think To the Lighthouse is a great place to start because this is where I started and it remains my favourite. And I couldn't have any Virginia Woolf on there without also having some Catherine Mansfield. Now, this is her complete works. Um, my favourite collection is probably The Garden Party, which I designed a cover for and that one is available from HarperCollins in the States. I first read Catherine Mansfield's stories at university as well, doing a New Zealand literature course, which I sort of took a bit grudgingly. I wasn't a huge fan of New Zealand literature before taking this course. Um, I hadn't had great experiences with it at English at school and things, but yeah, Mansfield, I feel like she's an author that just gets me and I get her. And I've done a whole video talking about where to start with Mansfield and a bit of a background of her life which is just as fascinating as her stories are so I will link that down below but yeah a great place to start is The Garden Party and other stories. I don't think we're going to do this in chronological order or anything this is just which books I pick up so the next one is David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas. It, it, it's almost a collection of short stories uh, but it is a novel and it's got uh, six different different characters, different main characters and it's split up so you get half of one story and then it cuts off sometimes mid-sentence and then we go on to the next story and the next and the next until we get to the sixth story where we have the full story and then it works out the way backwards so the fifth the second part of the fifth story is after that and so we don't actually get the resolution to the very first story until the very end of the book and it's it's a very novel way of writing a novel. This is one of the first books that I read with, that was really literary fiction, I think. Um, and I remember very vividly reading this as I was going over a very steep and windy hill. Um, I was in the back seat of the car and just thoroughly engrossed in this story. And he really plays with genre in this as well. So that each each story is in a different different period in history and a different place in, on the planet so it's it's covering different continents different times and different styles so the style of each story is appropriate to the setting and the the time that it's set in then there's this one here this is one of my favorite classics of all time and it's the picture of dorian gray i think i read this in my final year of high school and absolutely loved it this is wilde's only novel and I, I really love all of his all of his stuff, but I think this is the most sort of fully developed because um, w with his plays, they are obviously very developed and it's a full story. But you a, a lot of it is filled in by whoever's actually acting out the play, whereas with a novel, it's it's an easier thing to read because you've got all the in between bits sort of <laughs> filled in in between bits that's a that's a really technical way of of putting it you can tell i have an english degree but as well as being a, a sort of a, a morality tale um, about the the nature of of goodness and of of humankind as well it's it's really one of these books that delves down to the the human condition um another english degree term there 
Um, but I love the way that Oscar Wilde writes and his sometimes very dry humour. Um, it's it's a real mix of humour and tragedy in this one and I think that's that's what makes it such an unbelievably wonderful classic. Okay so the next ones are more contemporary and I mean I can't really choose one of his dark materials. They do go together in a set and it wouldn't make sense if you just read The Southern Life but this is my favourite of the three. Uh, I think it's because it's not, well, it's, it's a bit darker than the first one. The first one feels more like a children's adventure story, which it is, and so is this one, but it's got a bit more meat in it, and it's not as, quite as complicated as The Amber Spyglass, and I remember the experience of reading this as a child, and this definitely being my favourite. And it still is just because of that sense of nostalgia, I think. Um, whereas The Amber Spyglass, if you're reading it at the age of eight or nine, which is the age that I was reading it at, um, I found a lot of bits of this to be a bit more dull, which I found absolutely fascinating rereading it. Um, but yeah, The Southern Life is my favourite. But obviously, start with Northern Lights if you haven't read these. Um, if you haven't read these, what are you doing watching this? Go, go, go forth and read them because they will change your life. Next we have this wonderful, wonderful novel, A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozaki and it's magical realism, a bit of magical realism at least. It is about two women, or a, a girl and a woman, on opposite sides of the ocean. We've got uh, Nao, who lives in Japan, and she's written this diary which washes up on the shores of Canada, which is where Ruth, the main character, or other main character, lives. And so she discovers this diary, inside a Hello Kitty lunchbox and she starts reading it and there starts to be this kind of interaction between Ruth the reader and now the author of, of this diary and it's it's got so much going on uh, because now has all these different threads in her life and then there, there are the threads of, of Ruth's life and I think the most interesting parts for me are, are definitely now's uh, but it's interesting to see how Ruth reacts to what Nao is saying and so much symbolism about time and mortality and the past as well sort of being linked to time uh, so if you are into magical realism I think you'd love this um, not that it's very magical realist in, in many ways it is a realist novel but it has sort of surreal elements or things that aren't quite believable but this is just the most incredible literary novel and yeah it's it remains one of my favorites. So this list wouldn't be complete without Eleanor Catton of course and this is The Luminaries her most ambitious and most famous work this was the winner of, of the Man Booker Prize a couple of years ago now and you can see why. It's such a masterfully crafted novel and it's one I absolutely need to reread um, and I think I'll get a lot more from it a second time around. What makes this amazing is the way that it's structured. So it's written in, in the style of Charles Dickens really, or one of the Victorian novelists, but the structure of it is based on the cycles of the moon, so the, the different characters are in different places and in relation to other characters depending on where the planets were in the sky on that particular date and to help you out with this whole conundrum it actually has a little diagram like so at the beginning of each chapter um, so you get the first one here you get the second one at the start of the second chapter uh, about nearly halfway through yeah no that's still the first chapter still the first chapter it's a very, very long first chapter. We're still going. But after that, each subsequent chapter is half the length. So <laughs> you, once you've got past that first hurdle, it gets um, exponentially shorter each time. And then the very last chapter is rather short. This book begins with 
a character called Walter Moody walking into a bar in Hokitika, which is on the west coast of New Zealand, actually very close to where I was born, and a very strange meeting seems to be taking place. Um, at first glance it doesn't look as though there is an actual meeting, but that there, there are certain characters there and they are the main players in this novel as a whole. And so this whole first chapter is sort of an exposition, it's telling you who are the main players and what's happened up until this point and there have been some strange things happening um, which we then find out more about throughout the rest of the novel. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say about the plot of this. Um, if if you haven't read it I would suggest taking it away on holiday with you or reading it when you have a good decent amount of time to read it. I made the mistake of reading this over a long period of time and just in small chunks and it really didn't do it justice. So I do need to reread this and read it all in not one go but sort of on a on a regular basis as opposed to all over the place. But yeah it is an extraordinary novel and I highly recommend it. And then of course if you've been watching my channel for a while you will know that this is one of my favourite books of all time, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I think that if you like this you'll also like Eleanor Catton and vice versa, they have quite similar writing styles. Um, so this is a sort of crime thriller really, it's, it's a literary thriller where you find out on the first, well, in the first couple of pages that the, the one of the main characters has been killed by the rest of his friends and the rest of the book is finding out why they did this so we go back in time and we find out what drove them to this point of killing one of their friends and then from about halfway through it's the aftermath and and what consequences there are of of the death of this character and Again, so beautifully written, uh, a, a great sense of momentum. You just want to keep turning pages and finding out what's going to happen next. Uh, but most importantly, the characters are so fully realised. I felt like I knew each and every one of these characters and I missed them after I closed the final page. So that's why I reread this book every year or so. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's strange to say, say that a book like this is a comfort read, but it really is because you feel like you know these characters so well. So this is my favourite of Don Tartt's works but I also really love The Goldfinch which is one that I would like to reread again before too long. Um, the Little Friend is sort of the outlier of her books but it's also a, a very good read but yeah this would be the place to start if you haven't read any Don Tartt. So I have two more books. The penultimate one I don't actually have a copy of near to hand. I'm not sure where my copies of these books have gone but it's Harry Potter. Um, I'm sure you can picture the covers. Um, the third one is my favourite. I'm not going to say much more about it because what is there to say, you know, if, if you've read Harry Potter you know. I love these books so much and they are often the subject of artworks that I do and inspiration for things like book covers. I did a series of Harry Potter inspired book covers um, for Hogwarts textbooks and yeah they're just very very dear to my heart. And the final book, or books, I mean again these can't really be separated but it'll be no surprise if you've been watching my channel for a while. We've got Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Oh my goodness, I mean where do I begin with these books? They're just so wonderful. So there's, there's this one and then there is the second one, The Wise Man's Fear, and there is a third one hopefully coming out before too long. Patrick Rothfuss is quite a slow writer but you can see when you read his books why that is because each word is so carefully placed and each sentence is so carefully crafted and I always don't mind that the third one isn't out yet because there's so much to delve into in, in these ones that exist and this isn't actually my copy that I read. Um, my copy is full of little annotations and turned over corners and um, it's anyone who is very precious about books is worst nightmare <laughs> but it is that kind of book where you want to go through and you, you, you want to really tear it to pieces and and pick out all these little bits that are going on there's just so much to explore it's it's like 
making fan theories for Harry Potter all over again, which wasn't something that I was hugely into when the Harry Potter books were coming out, but it's something I really into with these. So I don't mind if you take a bit longer, Patrick Rothfuss, because, you know, I'm working on, on my theories, so it's all right. And there is plenty of material to work with in these two. And there's also uh, The Slow Regard of Silent Things, which is a novella about one of the characters from these books. I've just realised that I haven't actually said what these books are about. They are fantasy novels and they are focused around the main character who's called Quoth and he is a magician and a musician and I do love a musician. Patrick Rothfuss writes about music in a way that I haven't seen before and I was amazed to discover that he isn't actually a musician himself. I found that absolutely baffling um, because he writes about it so incredibly well. Quoth goes to this magical university and that's sort of at the the start of his, well it's not quite the start of his journey but it's it's a big part of particularly the first book is his time at this university um, and the second book as well uh, and he has some wonderful friends and he meets some, some fascinating people and makes some enemies along the way and it it's not just the, the fact that it's beautifully written but the, the plot is really fascinating and I think that's what my absolute favourite books do is that they are beautifully written but they are also really engaging in terms of the plot and if you can find a book that does both of those things which is very 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 rare um, I think you're onto a winner. The, the poeticness of, of these books. Oh I love them so much, I love them so much. There we have it. Those are my favourite books of all time for the time being at least. So I really hope that you have found this useful and you have found some new recommendations from this. Um, I always love watching people's favourite books of all time videos. They're I think the most useful for sort of pinning down what people's tastes are in books and getting a, a sense of them and also finding some wonderful recommendations. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any recommendations for me based on these books, I would love to hear them down in the comments section. If you want to find me elsewhere online, I am at Holly Dunn Design on Instagram and Twitter. My Goodreads is linked below and my website is hollydundesign.com. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!